What's the word, y'all? The Memphis Grizzlies will not stop winning. And I know that's going to get clipped because with my luck, they're going to lose their very next game. They're on an 11-game win streak, but un <laughs> unfortunately for them, they're still at the 2C because the different Nuggets won't stop winning either. But these two teams are just dominating teams. There's a stat that they showed today after they beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. Shout out to Memphis. They almost blew it. They did almost blow it. I want to give a lot of love to Evan Mobley because y'all know I'm an Evan Mobley, like, I'm not, I wouldn't ever use the word stand, but I'm a huge fan of Evan Mobley. And in the fourth quarter, I was I was feasting as somebody that's been backing Evan Mobley, even though he hasn't taken the jump that some of y'all think these second-year players are supposed to take. And you know what? We're going to make a video about that eventually because I've been seeing some wild stuff about year two players and even year three players on Twitter and stuff over the last couple weeks, and it's kind of disgusting. After they won this game, they posted on the broadcast that the Grizzlies were undefeated. Undefeated when they have any lead of 10. And that's kind of remarkable considering what the game of basketball is nowadays. It's a game of runs. And we've seen teams take 20-point leads in the first half and end up losing. We see teams taking a, a 10-point lead is nothing in the game of basketball, especially if we're talking about 10-point leads in the first quarter. Memphis Grizzlies, if they have a 10-point lead so far this season, they're winning that game. So you better go down about nine if you want a chance to beat this Grizzlies team because they are just doing ridiculous stuff. The last minute of the game itself makes this one maybe the game of the night. We had a lot of good basketball tonight. I would say maybe the game of the night just looking at the last minute or so. And we saw exactly why people like me and a lot of people are saying that Jaron Jackson Jr. is the defensive player. I think he's the betting favorite too. So the cat is out of the bag. Everybody realized that Jaron is actually that nice. Last couple minutes of the or last minute of the game, 40 seconds or so, he's on an island by himself with DG to PG, Darius Garland. Darius Garland, think he get around this corner, he go for the scoop layup, guess who's there? They call him the Block Panther. I don't, I don't, I don't love it. I'm honest. I don't love it. But he was there to get the rejection. Okay, it went out of bounds, whatever. Now, a timeout from the Cavaliers. Actually, I don't think they did call timeout. They had one. Isaac Crowell was trying to inbound the ball. Dylan Brooks plays great defense on Darius Garland, preventing him from getting the inbound pass. Five-second violation. Other side of the ball, Ja goes up for a layup. He misses, and guess who's there? Steven Adams with a putback. And then the Cavs have another opportunity to win this game, and then Dylan Brooks get the block. And the last minute or so, we saw while Jaron Jackson Jr. is the DPOY, and why Dylan Brooks is a is an all NBA or all defensive caliber player. I don't know if he'll get the respect to actually make it, but he's been one of those dudes that should be in conversations every single year. And if you need an argument about why Jaron is number one on everybody's list, is that before he came back from his injury, the Memphis Grizzlies were dead last in defense. Not 25th, not 20th, dead last. And since he has been back, they're the number one defense. But I don't want you to misinterpret that. I don't mean that since he's been back on the floor, they are the number one defense from, let's say, December or, or November 7th to now. I legitimately mean that he was he has been so good on defense and he's been so infectious on the defensive side of the ball that this Memphis Grizzly team that was dead last when he wasn't playing has climbed up the standings to be number one. So they've, they've erased those stats of them being dead last since he's been back to be numero uno. We already mentioned he's blocking every single shot. I, I love the fact that, like, we're seeing a lot of teams kind of develop this where their uh, best defensive player doesn't necessarily guard the best individual threat on the opposing team. Like, you don't see Jaron guarding one-on-one -on -one with the best bigs in basketball. That's not his role. He's doing the Romer thing, the thing that we saw uh, we, we, we saw Ime Udoka do with Robert Williams in the second half of the season where he was playing like a free safety role. And obviously, with him playing a free safety role, he can go anywhere he wants and just get a bunch of blocks. You watch any John Moran postgame interview, you watch any Desmond Baines, interview on uh old man in the three they always talk about how infectious jaron jackson jr's defense and passion is and, and they're feeding on that right now and it's hard to do the things it's hard to beat this team and what makes them super dangerous is they're one of the deepest teams in basketball i can't say number one they're in the conversation for number one but i look at like a pelicans team who have been missing brandon ingram since november 27th and then zion has been out with this injury they still stayed of course they went through a little scare but they've been relatively good we're like Najee marshall out of nowhere is now 20 point per game score you know what i'm saying stuff like that so they have a conversation 
uh the boston celtics have a conversation but the memphis Grizzlies are also there for one of the deepest deepest teams in basketball and they're all like 26 or younger like every every single one of them is like 26 and younger and people try to look at them and put their their age as like a deterrent on why they don't believe that this team can do the ultimate thing which is raise the Larry o'brien trophy i that in my opinion they could not be further from the truth now if you ask me are they going to win i'm 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 going to bet the field, but if we were at that point and the Grizzlies were the NBA champion, I would not say I'm surprised because they have everything you really want from a championship caliber team, but I personally think that this is going to be one of those years that you're, the cards have to be played right. You have to get the perfect seating because, because I mean, the Warriors could be, as you, you're the two seed, the Warriors could be coming through the play in at number seven. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to, it's a dog fight every single series. This is a young team for sure. I mean, I'm looking at the, the ages right now. It's a young team nobody is over 30 other than danny green who don't goddamn play even stephen adams who everybody assumes is 37 years old ain't even hit 30 yet this is a a 100 young team but young doesn't equal inexperience we've seen what this Memphis, Memphis grizzly team could do the core is the same and guess what desmond bain is better now than he was in the playoffs last season he had the whole back thing that helped that, that basically prevented him from being the best version of himself but we saw what he could do when he hopped onto the scene when john moran had his really bad series and now bain is back and since coming back from his toe injury he's been playing good basketball today he led all scores he had five threes jaron is playing his best basketball of his career again we want to see him stay on the floor and that's like the biggest question mark when it comes to playoff time can he stay out of foul trouble long enough to be the defensive anchor the defensive player of the year that we know he can be and, and they have the leader in john Morant. you know john Morant is a type of dude that doesn't need to drop 40 a night for his team to be competitive he don't need to drop 40 a night for his team to be good some of these games during the streak job we end up with 13 points don't matter he's still gritty him. you know what i'm saying like he's excited even if he ain't getting his as long as the team is winning and i think that's a good recipe i see a lot of people want to see them um make the big old trade to add an extra piece and and i and i know they're gonna have some hesitancy because we're doing the thing right now without doing an extra addition without trading our draft capital to get another piece and, and but i i will say i'm a little bit scared about the back end of their rotation come playoff time because those dudes are inexperienced we're talking about the jake laravius who might get pt you might not david roddy you know these are rookie caliber players that i wouldn't necessarily trust in the playoffs but like one through seven one through eight they all have experience they all have heart and they all play good defense okay i mean collectively they play good defense i can't i can't act like john moran is a good defender i can't i can't do it but you get what i'm saying as a as a as a collection they do their thing defensively and the one thing i really like about this roster is probably something that turns a ton of people off it's their ability to just be themselves i made a joke about the john moran gritty that's that's who he is that's who this roster is at the end of the day they are out there just having fun at the end of the day we're talking about a kids game they can play pay millions of dollars to do it their kids doing it and they're winning like why would i not have fun why would i not dance and those are the type of things that i i enjoy and it also adds another element for the people that don't like it when they do end up losing if they do end up losing it's conversations how, how will they respond when John Moran says we good out West and if they end up don't even making it out West, what's the response? Those are the type of things I like outside of the actual actual dribbling and shooting and defensive part of basketball is the things are revolving around it and they got a ton. Quick conversations about the other games of the day that I end up watching, the Atlanta Hawks versus the Dallas Mavericks. This was one of the better games for the Atlanta Hawks that I've watched this season and they're above 500. This might be the third year in a row where the Atlanta Hawks start off the season kind of eh and then the second half comes around and they go on a win streak and they make their way into the playoffs. They might do it again. DeJounte Murray was great in this one and though Trey Trey Young didn't have a crazy counting stats game. I, I thought he was really impactful and really effective in this one. And for the first time in a very long time, they have an entire roster. I know like Clint is selling a minutes restriction or whatever, but they have an entire roster. And now we can really start to see what this team could potentially be. He's got to keep getting AJ Griffin minutes. Just keep getting the minutes, bro. I, I don't understand how we can't get him. Just get, give that man his opportunity. Every time he hoops, he shows you that he's worthy of getting real minutes. Today, he got 20 plus. He should not get anything less than 20 plus in my opinion the okc thunder continue to do their winning i i think i want to make an entire okc thunder video um because i'm looking at tomorrow's slate of games i don't know if a big storyline is gonna come out of that one i want to talk about okc and their winning because they are one game sub 500 now and they're over under coming until the season was 23 and a half so uh we're halfway through the season and they're about to crush their over under the team just plays team basketball i know today they have 47 field goals and 41 assists like how, how 
what are you doing about that when they, everybody's willing to make the extra pass? And I said Shea's going to get his 30. He ain't had 30 today. He had, he had 23, but he was a plus almost 40. That's the same in my book. You know what I'm saying? I'm on a court. I'm 40 points better than the opposing team. I'll take that. The Timberwolves are just so very close to putting it together, man. I know they are obviously missing some people. I, I, we can't really control that. But they are just so very close to putting it together. And they blew another one down the stretch. The offensive execution was god awful. God awful. God awful. God awful. That's all I can really say. Uh, but they were so very close to beating that, that big streak that the Denver Nuggets are on when it comes to the ball arena. And Jokic had another 30 point triple double. You know, just doing the type of things that Nikola Jokic does on a nightly basis. He is, at this rate, is going to win number three. Number three in a row. Uh, and I, I can see it. And I ain't mad at it.